Hey everyone, Richard from Digital Foundry here with an initial look at Gran Turismo Sports Performance on PlayStation 4. Now we've been waiting for a Polyphony Digital GT game on PS4 for some time now and this is our first look at how that engine is shaping up on Sony's latest hardware. To all intents and purposes we're looking at an upgraded version of the existing PlayStation 3 engine, embellished with higher levels of geometry, more refined textures and a radical revamp of the post-processing pipeline, something that's far more apparent in the game's replays but more on that in a bit. Now bearing in mind that this is a pre-production build, let's take a look at some frame rate metrics. We're looking at a native 1080p resolution here and once again Polyphony is targeting 60fps. And based on certain facts we've seen in the very limited media we have available, the developer is able to hit that target even with a relatively large amount of visible vehicles on the track. But it's equally clear that in this pre-production code at least, Polyphony isn't able to consistently hit that target and an adaptive V-Sync solution is in effect. Now what that means is this, in a 60fps game each frame has a 16.7 millisecond render budget. If the frame isn't complete by then, the new frame is introduced once its rendering does actually complete. And that can happen as your screen is refreshing, producing an off-putting tearing effect. It keeps frame times low though and produces a more consistent response to your controller inputs compared to standard V-Sync. Now fingers crossed that we'll see a concerted optimization effort to increase performance and reduce that tearing in the final game. Ok so let's talk replays, these have always looked visually spectacular in the GT series and Gran Turismo Sport certainly looks at its best here, where the game's lighting and a phenomenal motion blur effect look simply sensational. Other post process elements such as a depth of field effect, bloom and perhaps a touch of heat haze also look quite beautiful. In increasing visual fidelity, Polyphony continues its prior strategy of targeting 30fps in the replays, doubling the available render time and thus allowing allowing for more ambitious visuals. But there is a wrinkle here, certain camera views switch back to gameplay style 60fps, occasionally with a spot of tearing producing a less consistent look. It'll be interesting to see if this aspect persists into the final game. Overall though, while it's clear that there is very definitely a visual upgrade in effect here, the performance profile of the title looks very similar indeed to the PS3 GT titles, though we do remain hopeful of an improvement in the final code. And on top of that, there's also PlayStation Neo to factor in of course. Now according to Sony's guidelines, all titles that ship from October onwards need to support the superior hardware, so we're curious to see what Polyphony has got cooking here. Plus of course there's the whole question of PlayStation VR support. Now fingers crossed that we'll get a closer look at the game soon but for now do like and subscribe to support our work. Thanks for watching.